Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks or Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is wildcard string matching and it is a hard level problem. So the problem says that we have been given uh, two strings and uh, uh, if you have done regex or something similar, you must be familiar with what they are trying to say. Now these two strings, one of them uh, will be a wildcard and the other one will be a pattern, right? So there are three types of uh, characters in the wildcards. First of all, there are normal characters from A to Z, then we have a star and then we have a, a I believe question mark, right? Now these, let's say this is the wildcard and this is the pattern. Now we have to tell whether this pattern can be derived from this wildcard or not. How can we derive? So for each of these characters, 26 characters, there should be an exact matching. So for if there is an A in the wildcard, there should be an A in the pattern as well. For a question mark, we can replace this question mark with any of the characters. So for this question mark, I can have any character from A to Z. And for this asterisk or this star mark, we can have any number of characters starting from 0 and going up to infinity. And each of these characters can be independently A or Z, right, from A to Z. Now, let us consider this particular sample test case where we have G, E, question mark, K, S and asterisk. Now, we have geeks for geeks, geeks for geeks, right. So, these two characters G, E are matching these two characters G, E, right. Then we have a question mark, right. So, I have actually uh, made them three. So, this is only up to here, right. Now we have a question mark. So this particular question mark corresponds to this particular E, right? Because I can replace this particular question mark with a E. Now I have KS here. So I have KS here. Then I have a star. So I can replace zero or more characters with a star. So I can replace all of these with one single star, right? So this is how they are working. Now let us consider one more test case. So this is G, E, star and then KS. Again, I have geeks. So these two GE and these two characters are same GE GE. Then I can replace this star with this particular E and then I have KS. Now uh, I am giving you one more example. Let us say we had this GE star E KS and then we had to match geeks, right? This is also possible. This is also a valid matching because we can replace this star with zero number of characters as well. This GE is similar, this GE is similar. This EKS is matching to this particular EKS. So this star can also be replaced with zero characters, right? So you can put in zero or more characters. Now the problem is how do we actually solve this question? We are going to solve it using DP. Let us first discuss what are going to be our DP states. So I am going to define a double dimensional DP where I is denoting, let us say I is denoting my current position in the wildcard string, wildcard string and J is going to denote my my current position in the pattern string right now dp of ij dp of ij together are going to denote if if the string starting from i and j is a valid matching or not right so dp of ij is going to store if the string starting from i and j is a valid matching what do I mean by starting from i and j? That means I am currently at the index i in my wildcard string and I am currently at the index j in my pattern string. So my uh, wildcard string might have some characters, my pattern string might have some characters and I have some pointers at some positions. So if I start, if my wildcard string started actually from this particular position and in my pattern string started from this particular position actually, then would they match each other or not? This is my question. This, this is the state that I will be storing in dp of ij, right? So obviously, uh, my answer is now going to be stored in. So my answer is going to be stored in dp of 0, 0 because both of them are actually starting from position 0, right? So how do I go about writing the transitions, right? So there are three cases for the transitions. So let me just write the helper function itself. So I'm just writing the memoize approach. So I have the helper function. I have int, 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 j, right? This much we have discussed. So let's say if dp of ij is equals to is equals to uh, 
let's say minus 1 is not equal to minus 1. That means we have already calculated state, this particular state, so we can return dp of ij. So I am just going to return dp of ij. Now there is one more thing, one base case. So if I have reached, let us say i is equal to equal to n and j is equal to equal to m. This means I have reached the last position and I have exhausted both of the strings. Then I have to return one. So basically what I am trying to say is, if I have an empty string in both of the wildcard as well as the pattern, that means both of the strings are same. So this particular case should return two because they are a valid matching. Right. Now let us continue our DP function. So we have set up a base case, we have set up uh, the condition for memoization. Now there are actually three cases. So I said that uh, the, uh, what do we say, the wildcard can have characters A to Z, then it can also have uh, characters like a star and then finally it can have a character like a question mark. So for A to Z, it's easy, right. So for A to Z, it's easy because the wildcards will have to exactly match the character in the pattern. So if, if First of all, wildcard of i is equal to equals to, let's say, we, let, us, let us discuss this uh, case at the end. First, let us discuss this uh, star and question mark case. I'll tell you why. So, let us just write uh, the question mark first and then I can write the star case and then I can write the a to z case, right. So, if, if my wildcard of i is equals to a question mark. That means my string has to exactly match, right. So uh, what I can try to do here is I can skip the current character because I can replace the question mark with any character, right. So here I will try to skip the current character and dp of ij is actually going to be equals to dp of i plus 1 and j plus 1. So you see this, uh, this particular case was very, very simple. What I did was I just replaced dp of ij with dp of i plus 1 or and j plus 1. So instead of writing dp, since this is a memorization function, I'm just going to call helper of i plus 1, j plus 1, right. So what I actually did was I can replace this question mark with any character. So, so that means after replacing, I my answer will be equivalent to whatever answer is returned by the next character in both of the strings. So basically, uh, let us say I have a question mark and a b here and I have an a and a b here, right. So I can replace this particular question mark with any character. Even if it was c here, it would have not mattered. So I am going to move both of the pointers to the next position. This is what I am trying to say, right. Now what I do, I will consider the next case, which is this uh, asterisk case. So I can replace this particular char character asterisk with any character, right, any number of characters. So there are actually two cases. I decide to consider the current character in the pattern inside the asterisk or I can try to consider the current character in the pattern outside the asterisk, right. So if I consider it inside the asterisk, what I will do, I am going to maintain the asterisk at the same position or the pointer i at the same position and I am going to increment my j. So let me just write helper here, helper i and j plus 1. So the thing about uh, this particular asterisk is that you can replace it with none or multiple characters. Now normally we would think about how many characters we would replace this asterisk with. But you will realize that the beauty of dp is that you do not have to actually count the number of characters you are going to replace by this particular asterisk. You can just think about the current state whether you want to skip the current character with the help of this asterisk or not. If you skip the current character, this j is going to move on to the next position and i will remain the same. If you do not want to skip the current character and you want to end the skipping, what you will do? You are going to call helper of i plus 1 j, right. So what it did was, you did not skip the correct character with this particular asterisk and moved this i plus 1 into the next position, right. But if you do it this way, then there will be a special case when let us say, the last character was asterisk and we had some characters here. So if whenever we decide to end this particular asterisk, then we may be going to move to the last position that is the end of this thing. But there are still some characters left in this particular case, which could have either got into this particular asterisk. So what I am trying to say is this part is complete, but we can also include a special case 
if s of uh, let's say if i is equal to is equal to n minus one, then dp of i j is going to be zero, right? Or it should be one, right? And I also have to write it here if this is the case when we are dealing with the asterisk, right? So if wild wild card of i is equal to is equal to asterisk. Now I'm going to close it, and then I'm just going to write it inside this particular part. So, right, and this is actually a part of else. So these two parts are combined. This is the first if, this is the else if, and then I'm going to have the else part. So let me just remove this downwards. Right. So I have considered these two cases. What I have done is, if the current character is a question mark. I am just going to call this helper function on the next characters. Now, if the current character in the wildcard is an asterisk, I have two cases: whether I want to skip the current character with the help of this asterisk, or I do not want to skip the current character with the help of this asterisk, and then move on. Right. So, if I skip it, then i will remain same and j will increment. If I do not skip it, then i will increment and j will remain same. But I just showed you a condition. Where the asterisk is the last character, and it could have possibly matched all the other remaining characters, but it does not. So that is why I have a special condition here. If i is equal to n minus one, that means if it is the last character, I am just directly going to write dp of ij as one. Right. Now coming on to the last part of this particular problem, when we have else. So you see that uh, how this helps us. Why I took this particular condition in the last? Because now we didn't have to specify what this character is equals to. If it is question mark, it is implemented at the top. If it is uh, asterisk, it is implemented in the middle. And for any other characters, it is implemented in the last. So if wild card of i is not equals to my pattern of j, then dp of i j, dp of i j is going to be zero. Otherwise, if they are same, dp of i j is going to be helper of i plus one, j plus one, right? So at the end, after it, you can just return your current DP state, DP of IJ, right? So this is how you could solve this particular problem. Let me just quickly go through what I just did. So first of all, we have the base conditions. When I have exhausted both of the strings, both of the strings are empty. That means I have found a valid matching pattern, right? So I return one from here. Now, if DP of IJ is not equal to minus one, I'm going to return DP of IJ. Now I check whether my current character is equals to a question mark or not. If it is equal to question mark, I can replace it with any character. So it does not matter what my current character in the pattern actually is. So I am directly going to set dp of i j as helper of i plus one and j plus one. I am going to move on to the next character in both of the strings. Now, if my wild card of i is equal to a star mark or an asterisk, that means I can replace it with multiple characters. So the first case is I can uh, keep my current i as same and increment j. So in this particular case, I'm including the current character inside the asterisk. Or what I can otherwise try to do is I can move out of the asterisk and then keep j as it is. So in this particular case, we missed one very important condition, uh, which was what if the asterisk is at the last? So I implemented it separately. If i is equal to is equal to n minus one, dp of i j is equal to one. Now, if you don't want to write it like this, if you want to avoid this part. I believe you can also do it like this. I have not tried it. We'll just try it. If you write it like this, i plus one, j plus one, it is going to work as well. So uh, why would this work? Let me just give you an example. So if the last character is an asterisk, right, and you have some characters remaining, right, you have this last character remaining. So previously, what we were doing is we were exiting from this asterisk, but not including this particular character inside the asterisk. But if we include this particular character in the asterisk as well, the last character to be included, then it should work as well. So we'll just try it live, and then we'll see what happens, right? So either you can write i plus one j here, and then write this particular part. But if you don't want to write this, you can directly write i plus one j plus one, right? Now coming on to the last part, which is if the character in the wild card is from a to z. I have to directly check if they are not equal. DP of i j will definitely be equal to zero. If they are equal, I can move on to the next strings or the next pointer in both of the strings. At the end, I can just return DP of i i j for the current. And I as I've already discussed, my answer will be stored in DP of zero zero. 
So this was the recursive memoization approach. Now let us have a look at the iterative approach as well. So I have initialized the dimension n cross m and I have initialized the dp vector with n plus 1 and m plus 1. So dp of n plus dp of n comma m is equal to 1. This was the base case. Now please ignore this for loop for now. We, uh, we have to first discuss this particular part. You will realize that this logic is exactly the same to what we just wrote here, right? The inside logic is exactly the same. If it is equal to question mark, I'm going to skip. If it is, go, it is equal to asterisk, I have two conditions. If i is equal to n minus 1, I have done something. Otherwise, I have done the other thing. Now, let us uh, try to uh, like remove this and convert it into 1. I said that if i plus 1, we write here, and uh, we can also write j plus 1 here, and it should work. We'll see in a while whether it works or not. But uh, this part is clear. And then we will move on to the last part where the characters are from A to Z. If both of the characters are matching, then I'm going to say TP of IJ as TP of I plus 1, J plus 1. Otherwise, if they do not match, TP of IJ will be equal to 0. Now, coming on to the for loops, how do we actually write this for loops? Again, as I always discuss that I can clearly see that my current state I is depending on a state I plus 1. That is why I has to be in reverse for loop. But uh, in other cases, in other problems that we discussed till now, we always saw that J was a straightforward loop. Here, J is also reverse loop. Why? So, you see that dp of ij is also depending on dp of ij plus 1, right? Where i is the same, but j is greater, right? So, for the same i, even for the same i, j plus 1 needs to be calculated before j, right? So, that is why j is also in reverse order. These are some little things that you need to observe to just convert your recursive code into iterative dp. The middle logic is the same. You just have to form these for loops. Now, at the end, you can just return your dp of 0, 0, and this would be your final solution. So I'm just trying to submit with this new change and see whether this works or not. So I believe it should work. Yes. So it is correct as well. And uh, you can go through any of the ways. Either you last add that last particular condition and keep it J here, or you can write DP of I plus 1, J plus 1. Right. So this would be the solution for this particular problem. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.